They're trying to get attention. You know what I'm saying? And and, and a lot of that has came from when they, when they started name calling. Although in times past we may have been part of those who said that words does not bother or hurt us, well, that's not true. In reality, words can cut deep and damage the innermost part of a person. You remember the old saying, stick and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me? Mm. Words are more dangerous or more hurtful than a physical beating. Yeah. A physical beating will heal a lot quicker than words spoken, especially by someone that you love. Now, people that you don't care about, their opinions don't even matter. What they say don't matter. It has no value. Yeah. A person who has value in your life, with, and you have, and you value what they say, they can hurt you with their words. Yeah. They can say something and hurt you with their words. And it'll take God, it takes God to heal that hurt. Yeah. I like this verse in Proverbs 18 and 8, where it talks about a talebearer. It says, the words of a talebearer are, like, are like tasty slices, and they go down deep into the animal's body. And what that's saying is words go into the and it, 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 it penetrates to your subconscious. It gets deep in your, in your spirit. All right, words that are spoken. And if they're negative words, those negative words get in there, and they then start to create uh, a, a sore on the inside of you. And that sore begins to be painful. And if you don't, if a person don't know how to forgive, see, see the key to receiving healing from a broken heart is you have to stop forgiving the source of the one that causes you a broken heart. Well, if a person don't know how to do that, well, then that sword is going to get bigger. And what they do, they start creating a wall, and they keep everybody out. Every, and every time somebody says something to them, they have a, 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 a monitor, and they're monitoring everything that that person says but the devil, like I said earlier, is going to come in and he's going to twist what the person said in their thinking. Right. And it's just going to make it worse. Mm -hmm. So we can't be name calling, you know. And, 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 and what's sad, we got music out there like that that degrades women. Yeah. You know, and men too. You can't be doing that kind of stuff. Sure. Words cut deep when. When we call, when, when, when we name call, we are cutting each other up with our words. The Living Bible for Proverbs 12, 18 reads, Some people like to make cutting remarks, but the words of the wise soothe and heal. Well, here he's talking about two different words being spoken. He said one like to make cutting remarks, meaning that it's tearing people down, but the words of the wise, their words heal. That's a person that's not name calling. That's a person that's encouraging. That's a person that's building up one another. But then you have, and, 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 and in a marriage, when you when you're in a relationship with a person, even if it's not a marriage, if you have been in that relationship in any length of time, you know what to say to hurt that person. Yeah. You know you know what it takes for that person to be uh, hurt on the inside. So see your your objective now. It's because you're in a disagreement and you're not conducting it according to God's way and you think that they're getting the best of you, what you're going to do is say something that hurts them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you say, well, you know, and even in your thing, you say, well, I can see it and they'll forgive me. Yeah. But I, even if they forgive you, the hurt is still there. Yeah. The pain is still there. Yeah. It's like putting a nail out, out of the board. When you put the nail in the board and pull the nail out, it's a hole still there. Yeah. That hole is still in there. See, we can't be careless with our words thinking that we can apologize later and, and, and then they're forgiven. We can't do that. Kind of nope. Amen? Amen? All right, I know my time ran out, but I'm going to go two more minutes, okay? Because mm -hmm. I want to finish this so we can start something different. The key, this is the last one of conducting a, a, a constructive relationship or disagreement. And this is a very important one, and that is we have to forgive. After every, after every disagreement, Regardless who's right or wrong, mm -hmm. forgive. Yeah. Make a pact. You know what? I forgive. I forgive you, you forgive me. You have to end it just like that. Mm -hmm. All right? Uh, we are to put away all bitterness, anger, evil speaking, and, and forgive one another just as God has forgiven us. 
And we got Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. It says, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So let's see if you're in the process of forgiveness. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted like all of us, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. You have to forgive. And see, we tend to forget that this applies to our spouse. We forgive everybody else, but we hold a grudge with our spouse. So after every disagreement, after every uh, thing where, 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 where you guys are not agreeing, end it with forgiving one another, regardless who was right or who was wrong. Okay, because I'm telling you, if you don't forgive, then you're going to harbor that resentment and animosity in your heart. And all it does is just, it, it, if, if, if you don't deal with it, it turns into bitterness. And Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15 says, bitterness defiles. Not only will it affect the relationship that you, the person that you're angry with, but every other relationship, they're going to experience some of that bitterness that's in there. But you have to deal with it. Amen. Are y'all okay with that? Amen. All right. Father God, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, that you are teaching us how to love others, how to live in relationships, how to walk in, 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 in walk walk in your word, doing your word, conducting it, conducting our relationship by your word. And we thank you, Father, that we you have empowered us and you have given us the information and we are determined to live Godly lives here on earth. And we give you praise and honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.